Hello everyone, this is Vibhul Burahit and you are watching my YouTube channel. My dear friends, as you can see, in this particular session, we are going to discuss about estimation of barium. Okay, this, the title is Estimation of Barium. Now, generally, my dear friends, barium can be estimated by gravimetric analysis, okay, which is based on what? Weight. But in this particular session, my dear friends, we are going to discuss about the estimation of barium by complexometric titration. All right, so that is the first point that you need to remember, and that is by means of complexometric titration. Now, my dear friends, when we talk about complexometric, so the first thing which comes to your mind is, yes, it's about formation of a coordinate covalent bond. Now, when you talk about the formation of a coordinate covalent bond, we require two species. One, the metal, the other one is going to be the ligand. Now, from the title of this, you are being very clear that the metal that we are going to discuss about is about barium ions. All right. So, here in this case, the ligand which has to be considered is EDTA, which I guess you know it very well. Ethylene, diamine, tetra, acetic acid. So, in a nutshell, this experiment is all about a reaction taking place between barium ions. Barium is an alkali inert metal, so it has a charge of 2 plus, along with the ligand that is going to be EDTA. All right. Now, next thing is, I use the word titration. So you know very well that we have a solution in the conical flask that of course is going to be the barium ions. We have a solution in the burette and that is going to be EDTA. Now, apart from this, we also need an indicator. Okay, which by means of color change, okay, there are various ways of indicating because that's the word. We say it is indicator. So it is going to indicate Okay, generally through visible changes that this is the end of the reaction. Okay, so we require an indicator and over here, the indicator that we are going to use is the name of the indicator I just write it down for you and that is methyl thymol blue. Now before my dear friends, I actually explain you the procedure of estimation of barium, let us talk about some theoretical aspect. What exactly is the theory behind this particular reaction? All right, and now the theory is very simple. And that is, whenever you perform titrations, you have been performing titrations for a long time, even in school days. So what happens is that you take a solution in the conical flask to which you are going to add indicator. Okay, a few drops of the indicator. And then you're going to titrate it from the solution which is there in the burette. Am I clear with this? So what happens is, the same way we are going to consider over here, the reaction is going to be taking place as we have barium ions which is there in the conical flask. Now this is going to be treated with this form of the indicator. Okay? H ion phi minus form of an indicator. Okay? Now see, Depending upon which form of the indicator that we are using, accordingly the color is going to be determined. Now, if I'm going to take this methyl thymol blue, the indicator in this form, H I with 5 minus charge, then this is going to be gray in color. Barium ions, alkaline earth metal, you know very well, alkali metals and alkaline earth metals are not responsible for color. You know this very well, yes? So, it's very obvious it is going to be what? Colorless. All right. Now, it's the solution in the conical flask interacting with the indicator because we are going to add the indicator in the conical flask. This results in the formation of a metal indicator complex. So I get over here Ba Hi 3 minus. 2 plus 5 minus gives me what? 3 minus. So this is a metal indicator complex, my dear friends. Okay, and this is going to be blue in color. Okay, that is what we say about a complex. Okay, it has got some unique property. Okay, as compared to that of the constituent species. Okay, the metal indicator complex is made up of barium ions and it is made up of an indicator, the thymol blue indicator. Okay, the color of which is colorless and gray, but here it is blue. So this suggests 
the formation of a complex having its own unique identity. Okay, now what happens is we are going to slowly add the solution from the burette. As I've already mentioned, the burette solution is going to be what? EDTA. So the next step now is the metal indicator complex will now interact with EDTA. EDTA is a very strong ligand, my dear friends. It has got a very strong affinity, attraction towards the metal. Okay, and hence the bond between the barium and the indicator is going to break. Okay, the indicator is set free. Okay, and EDTA is going to bind with the metal. And therefore, I get a BA EDTA complex. Barium EDTA complex with a 2 plus charge and the indicator is set free. Okay, see this H ion phi minus. So this is once again H ion phi minus. Okay, the mode in which we have added that indicator in the initial stage into the conical flask, we are going to get it back in the same form at the end of the reaction. Okay, now what was the color of the free indicator? Oh yes, it's gray. So obviously it's going to be gray over here. Okay, this is colorless. The alkali inert metal along with EDTA is going to result in a colorless complex. Okay, uh, EDTA of course is colorless. This is blue. So my dear friends, you got an idea now that we are talking about the end point. Yes, so the end point is going to be from blue. Okay, we are going to start. Actual titration is this. Okay, between the conical flask solution and the buried solution. So it's going to be blue. And we end up with what? Gray. So this is what is the end point is. Blue to gray. Alright. Next thing is. We are not going to carry out the reading only once. Because I am using the word what? Titration. So normally we carry out the reading three times. And at least two of which has to be what? Constant. If I want to get the constant reading, it is highly imperative my dear friends. That the complex which is going to be formed. The new complex which is going to be formed is going to be stable enough. Okay, it's going to be what? Stable. And the factor which affects the stability of the complex, there are various factors which affects the stability of the complex. The one which we are going to discuss over here in this particular practical, and that is about the pH. So here, remember that the pH is considered as highly basic, that is 12. This is the pH which is being required to make sure that the complex is going to be stable and we are going to get a constant reading. Alright, so pH is equal to what? 12. So how am I going to get that as? Okay, because normally when we use a buffer solution of ammonia, okay, and ammonium chloride, the pH is going to be around 10. Okay, so we cannot use that because we want it as 12. So what we do is we are going to use 1 molar NaOH. Okay, we are going to use what? 1 molar NaOH. So as a result of it, okay, what happens is that when we are going to do, use this, NaOH is a strong base and it is going to be 1 molar. So it's very obvious, my dear friends, that we can get that pH of what? 12 during the course of the titration. Alright, so this is my dear friends, the theory behind this particular experiment. Okay, it's first thing which you need to remember is we are discussing the complexometric titration or estimation of barium rather than a gravimetric estimation because whenever we talk about barium, generally the first thing which comes into our mind is about gravimetric but we are using complexometric over here. Uh, it's a titration along with uh, EDTA. We are going to use an indicator that is methyl thymol blue indicator but then we, we are going to use it in the form of HIN5- minus. so it's going to be gray in color and then we carry out the titration I have explained you the reactions okay you we'll see it very well and I hope you understand the color change is going to be from blue to gray the most important feature which is required for the stability of this particular entire complex is the pH so that's going to be 12 and how we are going to attain that pH of 12 and that is by making use of one molar NaOH so this is my dear friends about the theory behind this particular experiment. You have understood this very well. Please go through it.
Okay, my dear friends, now once you have understood the theory behind this experiment, now we go into the procedure part of this particular experiment. And that is about, we are going to discuss about the required quantity, say we talk about W grams of barium chloride, that is BaCl2. And now, it can be somewhere in the range of 0.5 to 0.7 grams. And we are going to dissolve this in say around 20 to 25 cm cube of hot distilled water in a beaker. Okay, it has to be hot distilled water so that the solubility of that increases. Now, the next thing is, once it gets dissolved in that, we are going to transfer it into a 100 cm cube of standard measuring flask. Okay, next thing is, washing has to be done of the washing has to be done of the beaker at least for two or three times with distilled water and that washing as well has to be transferred to a 100 cm cube standard measuring flask and then finally diluted up to the mark please use always distilled water okay no tap water please okay we are going to use what distilled water right next thing is we are going to prepare out 10 cm cube of this in a conical flask add just around say one test you of distilled water so that the color change becomes much more apparent much more clear so once in RP once you dilute it up to the mark, prepare out 10 cm cube of that in a conical flask and add some one test tube of distilled water. Next thing is, you are going to add around say 4 to 5 cm cube of 1 molar NaOH. I hope you understand why it is so because I have already explained to you the theory behind this. Yes, it's all about making sure that the pH of the solution is around 12. All right. Next is, once you are going to add NaOH, next is very important is you are going to add few drops of the indicator, you know the name of the indicator, and that is going to be methyl thymol blue indicator. This is what you are going to add. And as soon as you are going to add it into the conical flask solution, so the color is going to become blue. Alright, the color is what? Blue. Now you titrate this blue color solution, titrate it with the standardized EDTA which is going to be from the buret and the end point as I already mentioned in the theory part and that is going to be from blue to grey and then finally report the constant reading. report the constant reading. You understand the word constant reading is? Yes, I also call it as CBR. So here in this case what happens is standard EDTA, standardized EDTA means we already know that the normality or the concentration of EDTA is this before we actually carry out the experiment. Okay, that is what is called as a standard EDTA. A solution whose concentration is known is called as a standard solution. Alright, because we have a conical flask solution containing barium ions, which is in the form of fluoride. So that is what we need to estimate, my dear friends. We need to find out its amount. Alright, so it becomes a quantitative basis. So it's unknown. If the solution in the burette also is unknown, then how are we going to find out the known one? Okay, both unknown, not possible. So what we do is, one is known and the other is unknown. And on the basis of the known concentration, we find out the unknown. It's as simple as that. So therefore, the EDTA that we are going to use is going to be the standard one. End point, as I already mentioned, is going to be blue to gray. And you repeat this procedure for three times. And then two of which has to be constant. And that reading is reported as what? Constant burette reading. Alright, so this is my dear friends about the procedure part as far as the estimation of barium is concerned by complexometric titration. We need to take the weight of the required appropriate weight of barium chloride and that will be somewhere in the range of 0.5 to 0.7. Then 20 to 25 cm cube of hot distilled water you take it 
and you transfer that weighed quantity of barium chloride in a beaker, okay, and you dissolve that, and then transfer it into 100 cm cube of standard measuring flask, give some washings to the beaker for two or three times with distilled water, and transfer that washings also to the standard measuring flask, and then finally dilute it up to the mark. Prepare out 10 cm cube of that solution into a conical flask, add around one test tube of distilled water so that the color change becomes more apparent, to which you are going to add around say 4 to 5 cm cube of one molar anionage just to ensure that the pH of the solution is 12, to which you are going to add around a few drops of methyl thymol blue indicator. The solution is going to become blue, obviously you understand the theory behind this. It's because of the complex which is going to be formed between the barium and the indicator. And then we are going to titrate it against standardized CTA from the puree. The end point is going to be from blue to gray. And then you carry out this ratings three times to in total, two of which has to be constant. And that is reported as a constant burette rating. And on the basis of the constant burette rating, the amount of barium can be estimated, which becomes a quantitative basis of the analysis of barium. So I'm sure my dear friends, you have understood the theory as well as the procedure behind the complexometric titration of barium. Thank you very much for being with me. God bless you all.